guy who's upset with myself as a player or upset with something that happened on the field. And, uh, you know, certainly not the first time a player has thrown a helmet. I remember when I played for the Tigers, actually, I was angry about something I did and slammed the bat, and the bat broke off and then hit Juan Gonzalez. So, you know, I'm sure Nick felt horrible like I did with, with in the incident with Juan Gonzalez. But like you said, the media likes to blow things up, so a thrown helmet all of a sudden is a big deal, even though it probably happens every single game in Major League Baseball at some point by some player. Every single game. But do you think, Nick, <laughs> how dare you? Do you think Nick, though, I mean, it's got to be a little frustrating. He is on a six-game hitting streak, and it seems like he maybe hits a little better down in the order rather than in that two spot. But do you think he's been frustrated by this season? Because we talk about things like exit velocity, and that's been there. He hits the ball hard all the time. But a lot of the time, the results haven't been there, and then he struggled in the field as well. Yeah, but the fielding has been much better. He had a, he had a little stretch where he, he scuffled in the field, but um, really, more recently, he's returned to the form that we saw in spring training where he, he's looking good again at third base. matter of fact, yesterday I struggled whether to, to actually defend for him or not and ultimately decided to, but uh, I feel like he's, he's made those strides back to where he was. Um, and I may end up not defending for him as much if he continues to do this. Uh, as far as the, the results he's getting to play, there's no question. I mean, you can make the argument he's hit more balls hard in baseball uh, than any other hitter and gotten less results for it. And that can be frustrating as a hitter because you feel like you're doing everything right and you're getting no reward. Uh, un- unfortunately for him, you gotta you got to find a way to get through it. You can't start tinkering with, with the mechanics of your swing just because you're not getting the results because you are doing everything right. And, and that, it can be very frustrating. It can be very trying. Speaking of uh, frustrating, uh, Victor Martinez uh, on Tuesday night expressed frustration once again. It seems like he does it like once a year at the dimensions of the ballpark. And to me, it's almost ridiculous because he signed here as a free agent. He re-upped. You know the dimensions of the ballpark. And you actually played in the ballpark when the dimensions were even bigger. It just comes off strange and weird, almost like whining that such a professional hitter like Victor Martinez is upset with, the ballpark. Can you address that at all? Well, I mean, I, th- I think, it, well, first of all, the ballpark's the ballpark, and uh, it's not going to change. But I think it's similar to what we're talking about with Nick Castellanos in the sense that uh, you, he hit the ball extremely well, hits it almost 400 feet or to right center, uh, and you feel like you should be rewarded for it. But that happens to be the one area of, of, of Comerica where it's, it's bigger. It's bigger for both teams. Uh, and we have to get past it. But it's it's similar in the sense that it can be frustrating for a hitter when you do everything right and you don't necessarily get rewarded for it. I remember Dean Palmer and Juan Gonzalez used to bitch about it all the time, and it was a lot bigger, right? Yeah, I remember. It certainly affected – I'll never forget a game. It was first homestand in Comerica. And, again, this is when the flagpole was in play and the, and the bullpens were in right field. Um, so it was about four – shoot, it might have been close to 440 and – in left center at that corner. And uh, Juan Gonzalez, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, would have been a walk-off homer, crushes the ball over towards that flagpole just to the left of it. And uh, I think he thought he got it. I think the entire bench thought he got it. It would have been a walk-off win, and it ended the game <laughs> uh, as a fly ball at about 430 feet. So I, I do remember that. Um and- you, you, you mentioned uh, yesterday uh, James McCann is going to be probably activated maybe as early as, as, as tomorrow when, when you go to Boston. I assume that means Hicks goes to Toledo. Let me ask you this. With the way Avila's playing and the struggles that McCann has had against righties, is McCann still going to be listed basically in your mind as the number one catcher or has Avila done enough uh, to surpass him, especially in, in the two-hole? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to label it, but Avila has uh, certainly done enough to to play a lot more than we uh, anticipated going into the season. Uh, he's, as a matter of fact, he's playing today. Uh, right now we are scheduled to face three lefties in Boston, three lefty starters. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a pretty good chance you might see McCann in, in, playing in Boston, at least starting in Boston. Um, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit of a, a, a platoon-type situation with the kind of the caveat that, uh, you know, sometimes day, day game after night game, one of them might have to catch against the, the same side. Uh, 
Go ahead, Jeff. Well, just real quick about Justin Verlander. He's scheduled right now to start on Saturday. You still don't quite know if he's going to be able to go. Any more information about JV? And if he can't go on Saturday, what's the plan for uh, what you do? Uh, well, I'll, I'll know more in about an hour and a half. He's going to throw a bullpen at Comerica, and uh, we'll see how he feels or if he feels anything. He said yesterday doing all his uh, – Exercise routines, he felt fine, didn't feel anything at all, but we still got to get him on the mound. And if he doesn't feel well, or if he feels something in his groin when he's pitching, it's probably a DL situation. Then we'd have to find a starter. And uh, whether, you know, we could look internally at the major league level with a guy like Sophold in the bullpen. We could have a bullpen day, which would that be a little more stretch. Otherwise, we'd have to reach down into. Uh, into the minor leagues and bring up a starter. So we just we got to wait and see. It's really just dependent on on Burr's bullpen today. Yeah, I'm just curious on, on, on something uh, non baseball related. In, in the clubhouse, uh, Jeff was telling me a lot of the players after your game was watching the NBA game. Uh, when you were growing up as a kid, what what was the f- Brad Osmus the fan like? Did you like live and die with you know your favorite team? Who was your favorite team? Like like we always do. Uh, in baseball, I did. I mean, when I was a kid, and this changed because in high school I was drafted by the New York Yankees, which is ironic. But when I was a kid, I was a diehard Red Sox fan, and uh, my my mom was born and grew up in Brookline, just out, outside right. of Boston. So she she kind of raised me as a Red Sox fan, and I used to, you know, like a lot of people back then before TV, I would watch or I would listen to the radio at night, listen to the games. I would check the box scores and the in the newspaper the next day, and uh, I, you know, I was kind of a baseball rat. So you hated up. you hated Bucky Dent, you hated the Yankees, and all uh, that kind of I hated, stuff. I remember coming home from school and watching the end of that game. It crushed me. <laughs> uh, I remember watching the ball roll through Bill Buckner's legs. I think I was a senior in high school at the time. It was, uh, but then, like I said, ironically, you know, Boston fans are raised to hate Yankees. The Yankees. Uh, ironically, I'm drafted by the New York Yankees out of high school, and instantaneously. No longer like the Red Sox. You know, after 18 years of, of being a, a rabid fan, I instantaneously don't like them anymore. All right. Well, uh, good luck this afternoon. Uh, we'll see you down there, and uh, good talking to you as always. Thanks, Brad. All right, guys. See you soon. All right. That's Brad Osmus, who's presenting.